lucky him he tried that with you and not like sean strickland or mike perry oh my gosh i'm whatever. telling you some some fighters can't take that some fighters would have just started feeding them just punches what up everyone shaquille math judy here for cbs sports and you know who this is he is the former ufc light heavyweight champion and is coming off a big win at eagle fc 44 they call him sugar and I am salty, but that makes for a great pairing. Sugar Rashad Evans, how are you? I'm good, Shaquille. How about you, man? I'm doing well, man. Thank you so much for doing this today. And of course, big win. Gabriel Checo, Eagle of FC 44. First fight in three and a half years. Uh, uh, congrats on just an amazing job. Thank you. Um, it was a long time coming, you know, uh, you know, being away from the sport three years. Um, I quite didn't know what to expect when I came back, you know. Um, you know, I have my own expectations, but at the same time, I understand the game has changed and I understand the fact that, you know, being out for three and a half years, almost four years is not an easy feat because of the, the way the fight game changes so fast. You know, there's so many different nuances that fighters are doing mm -hmm. uh, in any given season, you know, on a yearly basis, let alone being away removed at least for almost four uh, full years. So it's uh, it was quite the challenge, but I had a great time. Amazing. And we're going to really dig into that. Before we do, just a quick reminder, everyone, if you like this interview, best way you can help out, thumbs up, subscribe, notification bell, comment, all that stuff really does go a long way. It's very much appreciated. Uh, before we get into Eagle FC, you are a lot of things. You are a former champ. You are former. You're the tough two winner broadcaster. But I was doing some digging. Apparently, you're also a PC. Um, you did this commercial spot way back when. Uh, you know, duking it out with some dude in the cage talking about your love of computers. Can you walk me through how that came up? Yes, it was uh, the Microsoft PC campaign when they're trying to compete with um, with Apple. And uh, I got a chance to be a part of their launching campaign. And it was, um, you know, I'm a PC and I can take you down. <laughs> that was that was my line. But it was really just for, um, you know, uh, the, the whole, um, you know, the Bill Gates uh, coming out with the PC, the Microsoft thing. So it was fun to be part of that campaign. You know, I got a lot of free uh, free stuff. <laughs> now, that's always a treat. But I, I know you're rocking an iPhone right now. So I guess Apple eventually yeah. went out of that one. <laughs> uh, Listen, I was Android <laughs> for the longest time, actually. My nephew got me this for my birthday. So mm -hmm. I had uh, had to switch over. And I'm glad that I did, though, too, because Team iPhone, it, it, it's, uh, it's all right, man. Look at that. And, uh what a nephew. What a great present. I know. Um, so you talked about leading into the uh, fight at Eagle FC that obviously the end of your UFC run left a bad taste in your mouth and you sort of wanted to wrap things up on better terms and also that you were going to take things one fight at a time. You're kind of non-committal as to what comes next. Just get through this, sit down and evaluate. Um, now that you've had a little bit of time to digest, what is the personal goal now moving forward when it comes to MMA? You know, um, that's a good question. Uh, part of it is just, you know, um, you know, building up this team that I have, you know, I have the black zillions, I brought them back. So I really want to build up this team and really, um, you know, be there to help build some fighters out. Um, you know, what gave me the drive to really want to compete and really know that I can compete was, um, training alongside these young women and, you know, young, young men and women, you know, um, the team that, I associated myself with and things like that. You know, there are some young, hungry, hungry folks on that team. So just being around that kind of uh, drive and determination really helped me feel something I haven't felt in a long time for, for myself as far as, you know, the, even the desire to want to compete. So, um, you know, I want to be there and I want to fan those flames for a while for those athletes who want to want to step up and, uh, you know, live the dream. Amazing. Now, uh, I'm, I know I'm going to get flack for it, so I'm going to put my foot down. It's not Nurmagomedov. I've listened to him pronunciate it. It's Nurmagomedov, as best as my anglicized mouth can produce. So before people come getting at me in the comments, uh, Habib said that he was interested in signing you to a four-fight deal if you were interested. Have you had some time to sit on that and think if that's a commitment you're willing to make right now? You know, I'm still, I'm still thinking about it, to be honest. You know, um... You know, it was, uh, you know, a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I felt uh, I felt amazing fighting for that organization, you know, um, really good organization. Uh, you know, they, they understand 
the, the game from a different perspective as far as just, you know, being able to um, allow the fighter to have uh, enough space during fight week and things like that. Don't overwhelm the schedule with a lot of different things, but at the same time, make sure that everything is done that needs to be done. Um, you know, it, it, it was, it was a lot better than, than I thought, you know, because competing for the UFC is such a machine and they're so well organized and they just, you know, uh, really can, can meet levels that a lot of organizations don't even know they need to meet. You know, it was good to kind of have, uh, an experience like UFC outside of the UFC, you know, kind of showed how much organizations around are starting to really pick up the ball. And that's, you know, due to a large fact, the fact that, you know, um, you know, some of these fighters who have had that UFC experience are now kind of bringing that kind of understanding to other organizations. And uh, Habib, you know, uh, being a longtime UFC fighter and a legend, you know, he brought a lot of those same great things over to his organization. Amazing. Now, sort of curtailing off of that, you know, especially right now with Francis Ngannou and the UFC fighter pay, fighter rights or something uh, at the forefront. And, you know, in the media, I find we always talk about how uh, fighters need to band together and speak out. And fighters often talk about how the media needs to do more to sort of push that story forward. What can fans do on their part to sort of advocate for fighters and, and, and help bring about that change? You know, I think that, um, you know, uh, them kind of being aware and kind of talking about it and kind of having that understanding can really, you know, um, you know, because if they're advocates for us, you know, then, then, you know, no doubt about it, things will change at a faster rate. You know, um, the, the UFC has been so successful, you know, because of the fact that they give the fans what they want. You know, that's one of the things that the UFC always can, can, can really say is the fact that, you know, they're a, a fan friendly organization because they really they really listen to the fans. And I feel as if like, you know, the, the UFC will listen to the fans and will make things different that needs to be made different uh, on a pay structure scale. You know, if the fans start to really, you know, um, you know, be there for us and advocate for us, you know, you know, and, and to all say this, you know, um, you know, it's 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 growing pains with any organization on a professional level at some point when you reach a certain level, you know, and I think th this is, uh, you know, normal growing pains, you know, it happened in all the big three sports and stuff like that. And the mixed martial arts, we're still yet to have that 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 big uh, point that we cross where things kind of change and become different. So I think that, um, you know, the UFC has done a great job to bring the sport to where it is. But there is time for a new evolution. And, um, you know, I don't think that they would be, you know, against, you know, finding a middle ground in, in the middle. As uh, someone who has a dog who likes to bark, I can't imagine when you got two and they start feeding off each other. But uh, pets are a beautiful thing. We love to have them here. Like, just like we have to have kids. And I know you got yeah. um, <laughs> hanging around the property, too. Um, I put out a fan Q&A. And uh, especially shout out to the friends over at Sherdog who love to get involved in this sort of stuff. Uh, there are people wondering, what is one UFC fight you wish that you had that was that never materialized or never was even really brought up that you would have loved? How you doing? Um, one, I'm sorry about that. Oh, good, man. Yeah, uh, one that I wish that would have materialized that never did uh, is a Shogun fight. Mm -hmm. You know, the Shogun fight is one that um, I really wanted uh, just because... You know, I, I, I was such a Shogun fan, such a big Shogun fan. And to watch what he did when he was in Pride and just, the, you know, the legend that he created just in Pride alone, um, you know, made me want to one day when I got my skills up to that level, yeah. you know, get a chance to fight him because, you know, he was fighting before I was. And uh, he was well, you know, well in the making of a legend even before I even decided to put in my gloves. So um, to be able to finally make it to that level, it would have been a, a great thing for me. You know, I, I pride myself on the fact that, you know, um, I may not have won all my fights, but I will say that I've competed against the best in my time, oh, you know, awesome. and that's what I, and that's what I always wanted to be able to uh, say from the beginning of my career. Like I didn't know how it was going to end, but I always, you know, always thought like, you know what, no matter how this goes, I always want to say that I competed against the best in my time. For sure. Um, and, and that was a popular choice among, among those contributing to the conversation as well. Uh, so I stumbled upon an interesting fact. Um, one of the guys doing fantastic work and raising 
UFC champions and contenders is, of course, Sanford MMA. Their current wrestling coach is Greg Jones. You are one of only four people to ever beat Greg Jones in collegiate wrestling. You got a 3-2 decision. And, I mean, they're all close. No one gets an easy yeah. win over <laughs> Greg Jones. And later, he becomes one of your coaches. Can you sort of, like, walk me through your relationship with Greg, especially when he first kind of became your coach? Yeah, um, you know, uh, like you said, he, he was uh, that guy that I beat in college. But once I graduated from college and once I started to, you know, uh, really, um, you know, evolve in my, in my MMA career, you know, um, I kind of felt as if like I needed a, a reminder, a brush up on my collegiate wrestling, you know, at the highest level. So, um, you know, when I was preparing for John Jones, I, uh, I reached out to Greg Jones and uh, I asked him would he be part of that camp. And, um, you know, he, he, he accepted. And, you know, we started to really, uh, you know, we, we, we discovered that, you know, we had, we had a bond, you know what I'm saying? Like I really haven't, I really didn't really um, speak to him until years and years and years. And then I started to speak to him when I wanted him to, uh, you know, work with me for the uh, John Jones fight. And, uh, you know, he started to work with me for that fight. And, um, you know, it didn't go the way that we planned, but, you know, it was great working with him. So then after uh, when a position came open to have, you know, a, a wrestling coach, um, I advocated to have Greg and, and I brought Greg down and, uh, and I made him part of the team. And, you know, to watch Greg grow to, to where he is right now as an MMA coach mm. is, uh, is, is a beauty, you know, because in my opinion, you know, he, he um, you know, he's like one of those coaches who, who set a precedent for what a mixed martial artist slash wrestling coach should be, you know, because you, you're, you're, you're um, as a mixed martial arts wrestling coach, you know what I'm saying? You're operating in the gray as far as like, mm -hmm. you know, how things transition from MMA, from collegiate to MMA, you know? So he has a really good way of marrying that together and uh, watching him evolve his style for the, for the Greg Jones style has been, uh, has been a treat for me. Amazing. Uh, very quickly, you, you, you were under the tutelage of Dan Severn early on, right? Yes, yes, I was. Okay, so I, this reminded me, because when I think Rashad Evans, I don't just think like top tier fighter, former champ. I also think about the charisma, the on-screen performance, and someone, I, can't, I wish I remembered who, but someone sort of let me in on a little secret that Dan Severn used to or maybe still does run uh, his training programs, including MMA, including pro wrestling, and he also does promo classes with his MMA fighters. Do you have any experience with this? Um, not the promo classes, but I, I mean, I was with um, Dan Severn for a while. You know, I was training at a small gym in Lansing, Michigan, and uh, you know, after we got to the point where we were beating the hell out of each other because there's only like six of us, we decided to go and and train with uh, with with, with, um, with Dan Severn, and um, you know going to cold water and training with those guys at the time, you know, Dan was still pretty active at fighting and Dan was probably at the time, I don't know, like maybe 50 years old. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of hard to say, but he was still training and still going at it. But what, what he would show us from a technical standpoint, it was like old school catch wrestling, you know, really mm -hmm. wrestling, you know, with the whole uh, grappling aspect on the submission type basis. So it was, it was a lot different, very old school, very punishing style. So, um, you know, he used to always uh, make sure that, you know, we were brought up on the level of, of what we should do in certain scenarios and things like that. And, uh, you know, making sure we're ready for TV was one of them, too. You know, Dan yes. Severn was one of those, those TV-ready guys and making sure that you can seize the opportunity. Um, you know, I got the opportunity to fight on The Ultimate Fighter because of my relationship with Dan Severn. Dan Severn mm -hmm. was one of those guys who, um, who helped me get on the scene and really, uh, you know, take it to the next level. You know, the first few shows that I fought in, they were his shows, you know, they were his tournaments. Amazing. Uh, are you good to go a few more minutes, Rashad? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. Um, and speaking of legendary fighters, the mean streak, Don Fry clocking drunk fans at UFC events. Um, and that actually really, you know, fan etiquette ties in really nicely to this next question. Um, there is a very popular online moment in which a rude fan I, th I think he was trying to get you to sign a photo of a fight that you lost and you, you brush him off You're like no man i'm not i'm not doing this stupid and i've i've heard a lot of stories of ufc fighters They're like dude i'm not doing that at these fan meet and greets so i wanted to kind of flip the question what are your tips for good fan etiquette when approaching a fighter 
Um, you know, uh, just treat a fi- just treat a fighter like how you want to be treated. You know, I feel as if sometimes, um, you know, these fans forget that we're people. You know, what I'm saying they see us so much on TV is the fact that we just have like this this uh, you know I, I guess uh, non human thing that you think people on TV are really not real or something. I don't know what it is, but um, it, it's it's a it's a weird thing when when, when they just kind of like they almost they almost handle you in a sense you know what i'm saying but they they forget the the fact that hey we're, we're people just like just like just like they are you know um so some fans can be very demanding in that in that respect you know fans who don't really get that so i, I would say to fans you know just kind of you know treat people how um how, how you would want to be treated you know and a fan he wanted me to sign uh that the, the knockout face that i had when when machita knocked me out <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, cause I, cause he tried to, you know, he was trying to play me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what, man, all right. You know, every, every moment inside the octagon can't be a shining moment. And that's what we do it for. We do it yeah, for that, course. for the fact that, you know, something could happen to you, you know, that's what makes it as exciting as it, uh, as it is, you know, being able to overcome the fears of something completely embarrassing happening to you. So when it does happen to you, you just gotta, you gotta live with it. But when jerks do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that fan was a jerk. I mean, l- lucky lucky him. He tried that with you and not like Sean Strickland or Mike Perry. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, some some fighters can't take that. Some fighters would have just started feeding them just punches. But, I mean, I'm, I'm a cool collective guy. Yeah, man. That's that's, that's the sugar method. Um, are we? I, I don't know who, who's around. I mean, very public with it. Can we finish this on some psychedelic talk? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Quickly, which fighter do you think could benefit most from a from a psychedelic experience? Like, who needs Ooh. that? Who needs that uh, breakthrough moment? Spirit. Man, if I can pick anybody, it would be John Jones. I would get, I would get John Jones, man. I would get him. I would get him with the, uh, you know, I'll sit down and have ceremony with him and giving him like, you know, I mean, I don't think. I mean, listen, mushrooms would be a good start, but I don't think mushrooms would be that <laughs> that 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 thing that kind of brings them to that breakthrough moment. You know, I think you need, I think you might need a little something stronger <laughs> to have that breakthrough moment. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe something with a three letter acronym. Um, yeah. <laughs> as now, I mean, not to put myself in your category because I'm not at all, but as a fellow morning combat guest host i would love to see a video of luke thomas and brian campbell just sitting there. oh my gosh i would i mean especially brian campbell you <laughs> yeah he could, he could use that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ryan <laughs> ryan has some stuff he needs to figure out and i think Yo, B, bc bc is probably one of the funniest dudes yes. that i know just like accidentally funny you know what i'm saying it's like sometimes <laughs> he's just he's not even really trying to be funny he's just being himself and he's just funny as hell Amazing. Uh, that is that is BC to a T. BC is a lot of things. Also very kind and supportive. I got I got Absolutely. a lot. Of, I got a lot of love for BC. I mostly say it in jest. Okay. To finish here, Guru, what is your preferred set and setting for a psychedelic trip? Um, set and setting would be Colorado. Uh, maybe like in a, um, maybe like in like a uh, uh, outside, definitely outside, or. Um, or either that in some kind of, uh, you know, um, yeah, outside, outside, it'd be outside somewhere in Colorado, uh, and just kind of, you know, in nature. And nature is always, always the best because, you know, the thing about when you do those psychedelics is, is it, it brings you to nature, you know, it brings you to the nature of yourself and, uh, you start to really, um, get in sync with the nature around you. So, um, in nature and, and, and Colorado is a perfect place because, you know, there's just something um, so pure mm-hmm. about Colorado. You know, the air is nice, been nice and crisp. You know, no matter how cold it is outside, you can look up and you can see the beautiful sun just beaming on you almost 365 days a year. Um, you know, it, it's uh, it's got a special place in my heart. So definitely Colorado somewhere. Beautiful. And hey, I mean, in terms of legality, Colorado is about, about one of the best places you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll end on this just because I thought it was funny. It tied in, I, and the reason I was laughing while you were telling that story is I was playing, uh, I was playing a, a shooting game, Apex Legends, and you know sometimes you match up with strangers and they got microphones. And at some point, I discovered that this dude is on psychedelics and he's he's on mushrooms and he's playing video <laughs> games right now. And I'm like, 
isn't this a lot for you? And he's like, no, I didn't take that much. Everything just kind of looks vivid. I'm like, hey, come here. So we, we, we walk away from all the fighting that's happening, and I take him to a bunch of trees. I'm like, isn't that pretty? He's like, yeah, man, that's a wicked tree. I'm like, nature, man, nature's something special, isn't it? But I'm you. I don't think he ever got out of his room and actually stepped foot in real nature. <laughs> yeah, he, got, he got the closest we could get to it. All right, Rashad, uh, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I want to leave you with the last word, so I'll do my part right now. Guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. If you're still here, please subscribe, thumbs up, comment, all that. Like I said at the beginning, goes such a long way to helping us do what we do. Thank you to CBS Sports for empowering the video. Full feature with Rashad in the bio of this video. Rashad Evans, man, what, what is there left to say? It's been a Hall of Fame career. Whether or not you continue to do what you're doing in the cage, that is up to you. And either way, I'm sure fans are excited to see what's next or... Uh, pleasantly nostalgic about everything that has happened up until this point if there's anything you want to let anyone know please do so yeah i like to thank everyone for the support you know um you know coming back and really uh just facing that part of myself was a very hard thing to do but i felt as if with everyone you know motivating me in their own ways you know sometimes a rashad go get them but sometimes rashad you absolutely suck you know that that did, that did it too you know <laughs> let me know how much trash i was uh, really motivated me to really um, to face myself in ways that uh, you know I may have been you know not uh, not wanting to do at times, and I'm very thankful and appreciative appreciative for that. Um, I'm also excited about you know what I have coming up in the future. You know, um, and right now you know I'm working on this project called Metatodes, and uh, you know it's something that uh, that's a big project for me because it kind of it kind of ties into my um, you know psychedelic experience with the toad. And there's, you know, a call for action there where, it, uh, you know, a part of the proceeds will go to mental health awareness, in which I, you know, find uh, very important in the cause that I'm connected to very much. Uh, somebody who's battled and, and tried to, you know, um, always stay ahead and keep the weeds out of my mental garden and, you know, keep the depression and everything away. So I definitely understand how, um, you know, mental, mental uh, health is, is a huge part in society and especially now. Also, um, I have this company that I'm launching with functional mushrooms, lion's mane, turkey tail, uh, reishi, shiitake mushrooms, uh, cordyceps, and that kind of thing. And uh, it's called Umbo. And uh, it should be out, you know, in about, in about a month or so. I had me, myself, myself uh, Jake Plummer, Jake the Snake Plummer, the quarterback, and a good friend of mine, uh, Del Jolly, who's founders in his company. So we want to be able to give people a uh, good mushroom experience as far as, you know, all the benefits of medicinal mushrooms, functional mushrooms, as well as, you know, and, and, and it being legal, you know. So, um, you know, stay tuned for those things that I have going on. And uh, I appreciate everybody and I appreciate you, Shaquille.